Hey guys, this is Sparlikos. And today in Minecraft, we're going to be doing a special request video from my little brother, my little sister, and my nephew, Daniel, Elizabeth, and Javorian. And this is a special video for me because I have not seen them in about four years due to moving uh, out of Texas and well I want to say I love you guys and well I miss you so with that all out of the way let's get started on building this mansion alright so I found a little village over here and this world is a flat world, mainly for demonstration purposes. What we're going to be starting with is the, well, outline and foundation. This is where you actually get to choose the general shape of your building and also choose what sort of foundation you want. For me, I'm going with cobblestone because I'm actually familiar with using cobblestone quite a bit. And we're also going to be using birch to mark the, well, these are going to be where the supports will be, which I'll get to in part three, well, uh, step three, but this is step one, so I'll see you guys at step two, let's start the time lapse. Okay, so this is basically your outline of the building you want to build. You can change the shape to however you want. This is just the design that I settled with. Sort of a octagon type building with two different patios. Now the next part is laying down your foundation which is going to be a one block layer of whatever material you chose for your foundation. For me I chose the cobblestone because I feel it fits better for a actual foundation of a house. But you can use any material from wood to wool. Really, it's just preference. And I will go ahead and fast forward through this part so you guys can see what the, what will look like once it's all set up. See you in a bit. Alright, so as you can see, I already have finished the foundation. If you're wondering why these uh, pieces of birch wood are still inside there, it's so I have a grid pattern to remember while I'm building in the center where the uh, outer uh, supports are so that way I can actually uh, sort of eyeball where certain uh, supports on the inside structure will be. Now the next part is basically just mapping out how you want the rooms to look and for this you're going to want a material that you don't mind getting covered up because it will be mainly where the wall and the floor actually meet. You'll see what I mean uh, when we get to actually adding walls and 3D elements and the floors. But right now I'm going to go ahead and choose some birch planks because why not? And those will act as the outline for where walls and hallways are going to go. I'll see you on step four. Time lapse. A uh, little side note. You don't have to do this, but thing is, I actually like to always build a mansion's front door uh, with a large foyer that has stairs. Now, this is not really a necessary thing, but you can add it if you want. Some actually have like hallways that have stairs going upstairs. And that's it. But I just like the look of a foyer at the first room, well, as the first room that you enter when you go into a mansion. Just a little side, t side note. Okay, another little side note that may actually help you make the building not feel so claustrophobic. I always recommend building at least a hallway or a room if you're going to build a small one in terms of height, 
at least say this is the floor. You don't want one that is about yay tall. That will make you feel very claustrophobic and want to get out of the house very quickly. Nice if you're building a horror type thing, but not nice if you're building a mansion for yourself. What I recommend is the floor here. Let's say add a half slab if you're wanting to add like supports inside the building going through walls. This works because now you don't feel as claustrophobic, but you know that the building is structurally sound because there is a structure there that is holding up the floor above you. You don't have to add that, but it's a little side note. But main thing is you do not ever want it to be a room or hallway that is about two blocks tall in height. You want it to be at least three blocks, maybe four, but you do not want it to feel so cramped. I really don't like it when people do that. I don't know why some people do that, but it's their decision. Really, the house can be as tall as you want it, but try to at least make the house feel spacious or large if you're going for a mansion. Okay, almost done with step three, but I figured I'd give you a little example of what I was talking about earlier. So, as you can see, I already mapped out the first floor and these empty spots are going to be hallways and rooms. I also added a, a, a deck and patio to here and here. So what I was talking about earlier is basically the hallway would say be, well the floor for the hallway would say be this blue wool. We'll just use that as an example. And then the wall would be this green wall. Now, see why I said you wouldn't be able to see the material you use for the outlines? It's because it's behind these two blocks. Yeah, if you remove the block, you can still actually see it. But, put the block back, and it's no longer there. Out of sight, out of mind, that's why I said you don't really have to actually use a, a similar material to what you're building with. You can just use, heck, you can use any block that you can build with. Like, heck, you could even use the ores if you wanted for this part. But the frame, since that's actually going to be, well, for, this, for the supports and frame, since that part's going to be something you will see inside the house as you're walking around, make sure you choose a material you will like and make sure it works with the build plan that you're going for. Now, with that all said, let's get back to the time lapse. Okay, guys, there is actually one quick thing that my friend Shadow has done before in his builds of mansions, buildings, anything, and I just thought that this would actually be something helpful for people who are doing their first build like this or just as a little bit of a helpful tip. The, if you go into your, what was it? Actually, where are signs? This is something that my friend Shadow uh, does whenever he's working on stuff. And the thing is, he will normally use signs like so to map out rooms like, say, a, oh, I don't know, pool room. You know, for people who want to play pool or whatever. Or, say, map this out as the foyer, or, I don't know, greenhouse. The point stands. Basically, the signs can help you keep in mind to what you're wanting to build, where you're wanting to build it, how you're wanting to build it. But I tend to not really use this tip. 
because well, normally I just keep it all in my head. But if it helps you in the long run, feel free to do it. Back to time lapse. All right, now this is step 3.2, I guess. I didn't really write down my uh, in my bullet points, but this is the part where you add walls and uh, and your uh, floor, which I guess it can lead into part four. Well, step four: walls and 3D elements. Basically, stuff like these little fence posts to make it look a bit more, I guess, three-dimensional or a bit more interesting instead of just block buildings like that. But uh, this part, again, all up to preference. You can use whatever materials you feel comfortable with. You can build it however you want. But I'll point out a few little tips and tricks that I've learned over playing Minecraft. So, as you can see on these houses, they use glass panes instead of, well, just glass. Which, if you look at it from certain angles, it actually does add a bit of 3D element. Same thing with, say, the stairs. How they're just hanging off the side where the roof meets the actual building. Again, more 3D element. Or these fence posts, which, again, 3D element. Yeah, I think you can get the idea. But also, it helps if you, like on this square building, use some different colors in your design to actually break up the blandness or squareness or whatever word you want to use for it. But to break up the thing that you're looking up, looking at. I don't really know how to explain it. It just makes it look more realistic I guess no that's not the right word but whatever the word is it it just helps so just try and use like say if you used cobblestone for the foundation and you use birch uh, for the supports you use a different material and I'll show you what I mean by that while we're uh, working on it, or once it's done having the walls and the floor and everything added in. I'll meet you back on step five for the roof. Okay, one thing I did, well, one thing that I should mention is, well, you're gonna wanna build stairs if it's a two-story or three-story or whatever. But say you're building one for the foyer, there's two real ways that I see you can go about doing this. You can either A, use the typical stairs that are built into the game. And well, yes, they're easy to use, and you can save space on them. What I like to do is I like to actually use the half slabs for the foyer's staircase, mainly because well, for one, if you build them like so, you can walk up them. And it's mainly because it's sort of using the same uh, mechanics as the stairs, except, well, it's slabs. Anyway, you can build a bit more luxurious looking stairway with these, and, well, have it look really nice inside the uh, foyer. But you don't have to do this. You can, bleh, you can use those types of stairs if you want. I just prefer this style because it looks a little nicer to me. And well, with half slabs, you can just build them up and well, make your own guardrails or whatever you want. Really, the it's all up to your imagination, what you want to build. And, as you can see, I already built a pretty nice little staircase here, but we can make it look a little better with, say, fence posts. Uh, assuming I actually add them in the, in the right spot.
There we go. See? It has a bit of 3D element, and you won't fall off the stairs. Now, let's get back to building and time lapse. Okay, one other thing that I forgot to mention is a little trick me and my friends found out about on recording a few videos, which is if you set up the fence posts like this and then add a door here. Of course, it's a little finicky. The door actually has 3D elements now to it, and it connects to the fence posts, which we didn't really intend to find that. We found that by complete accident. But it's probably better if you, say, add this on the outside, where, like that, and then close those. Up. Close those, or no, wait, hold on. Close those from the outside, open them from the inside, and voila! Pretty neat what you can do with uh, a few minor uh, touches. And back to time lapse. Stop time lapse here for note. Okay, guys. There is one thing that I've done a few times on buildings where I want to add lighting onto the floor for one of the main rooms. And a quick easy way of doing that is finding the material you use for the baseboard, which in this case it is jungle wood, I think. Yeah, jungle wood. Finding the stairs of it, deleting the, the uh, floorboard, or face. Uh, bleh, not faceboard. Deleting the uh, floorboard, or not really floor. Uh, you get what I mean. Deleting the one layer closest to the floor, and then deleting two layers underneath that. Why two layers? Well, you'll need one layer for your redstone blocks. And then you'll need a second layer for that. Now this next part's a little tricky, so try and figure out your best way of doing it. But what I sometimes tend to do is just delete a block in front of where I'm building, and then adding the stairs upside down. And then putting the floor back. Now I'm going to turn it to night, and voila, you now have lighting at the floor base. Pretty cool. Alright, let's get back to building. Okay, so here's some lighting uh, tips for the torches that you can actually uh, customize a bit. The way you do this is you place down a torch, then an item frame, then a trap door, and voila! Adds a bit more 3D element to the house, and provides light. Oops. Uh, just forget that. Alright, so... I'm going to be using two different roof styles. Something similar to this for the patios, and then something similar to this for the actual roof. This will also create a attic because I will be filling in the gaps between each one of the support beams for this house. And that will make it a little easier on me for me to build the various different roof roof shapes for the house. Well, no time to uh, delay. Let's get started.
Oh guys, with all those steps out of the way, if you were following each step, you should have something of the same quality as this. Keep in mind, you don't have to, well, build exactly the same building. You can change it up a bit if you want. You can change the shape, change where all the rooms are, anything. Really, it's all up to you. But these tips, I hope, help whoever watches this learn a few little tricks for building a mansion in Minecraft. And I hope you learned a few 3D element uh, tricks as well. Well, Daniel, Elizabeth, I love you guys, and thank you for uh, getting back in contact with me. And honestly, I really do miss you guys. I hope I can get to visit you guys again soon. And as for the people that were watching the video as well, well, see you next time on the next episode of Saints Row. That should be fun.